Today I'm going to show you how you can get all of this gear enough for a very comfortable overnight or multi-day adventure on your dual sport enduro or adventure motorcycle using the Giant Loop Great Basin Saddlebag. One of the most common questions I see in YouTube comments is, how do I actually pack all of my gear on my bike or how do I actually take all my gear motorcycle camping? And so I wanted to do a couple videos for you and kind of show you how I pack my motorcycle camping gear on my DRZ 400. This is my personal DRZ for motorcycle camping. Just because some people have questions about how to pack a light enduro bike, a light dual sport like this and being able to take enough stuff. And so I'm here to show you and tell you you can take plenty of stuff to not only get through in a super basic sort of motor camping setup, but actually you can take a few creature comforts and be quite comfortable using our bag. So today I'm gonna to show you the Great Basin bag. This is one of our horseshoe shaped bags. It works on any motorcycle with passenger foot pegs. The DRZ is not an adventure bike, it's not a huge bike, but this bag mounts quickly and easily and it is the DRZ is plenty capable of carrying it and everything that I'm about to put in it. So it'll work with almost any, like I said, light enduro bike with passenger foot pegs. This is a 68 liter bag and it's a lot of space. The other thing to keep in mind about the Great Basin bag is you do not need racks of any kind to use this. Just the motorcycle that has passenger foot pegs to attach the lower straps to. I've actually got mine mounted to a rear rack. I have a giant loop tail rack on here. I made a video on that, which I'll link for you. That's one way to mount the rear, but if you have a rear rack or any rear mounting points on your bike. Very simple and easy to put this bag on. I put this on in five minutes. Anyway, let me show you how I pack it so you can see just how much gear I get into this thing. For the Great Basin, people say it looks like a pair of pants when it's empty, and it totally does, but what you've got is two very large legs on this bag, and so I like to put my biggest, bulkiest items in each of the legs. So the first thing I'm gonna load in here is a sleeping bag. This is just a regular old backpacking sleeping bag. I'm just gonna take this bag and stuff it down in the right leg. I've got the front straps of this mounted, but I haven't pulled the back tight. I'm gonna load it up first and then I'll do that. So right side into the bag goes my sleeping bag. And I've got lots of space actually in here on top of it. This is a Kelty Gunnison 2. This is a two person backpacking tent. And I like to use our dry pod because I can really compress this down to the absolute smallest size possible to shove it down in this leg. And the other thing I've done is uh, I've removed the tent poles. I'm just gonna put these on top or like down beside it. It just makes it so I can get this bag a little tighter because this is the tallest part. So this is what gets in the way when I try to roll it down. I just keep the tent poles separate. This is just gonna go down in the left leg of the bag. And it goes all the way in just like that, as you can see. Right now I have sleeping bag, tent on each side of the bag. Let me show you what it looks like inside. So down in there on the left is my tent. Down on the right, sleeping bag. Next, I like to go with other bulky but soft items. So this is my sleeping pad, and this is my pillow. And these are just gonna go down the right side by the sleeping bag. Put the pillow in first, because I can use it to take up a little space. See, and then sleeping pad right down in here. And I've actually got that sideways on top of the sleeping bag. Just in case you're wondering how it fits, there it is. One other thing I like to just put in and have pretty secure, this is my jet boil, my cooking setup. I'm gonna put that just right on top of the tent sideways so the bag holds the lid down. So that's in there. This is my possibles pouch. This has got my coffee stuff, my coffee cup, headlamp, fire making stuff, toilet paper. This is a bag I take on every camping trip with all my incidentals. So I'm just gonna put that right in on top in the middle. So take a look. This is maybe more in depth than you wanted, but there is a ton of room still in that bag. You see, even with that in there, I only have a few things left, so let's put them in there. As far as essentials, all that's really left is tent poles. Those are going in easily. This is just a toiletries bag, contact solution, you know, toothbrushing stuff, whatever. Put that right in on top. So in terms of a very basic motorcycle camping setup, we just covered everything already. Uh, tent, sleeping bag, sleeping pad, got a pillow in there. Got incidentals, headlamp, light, fire making, coffee making, got my jet boil for cooking. And we can throw in, you know, you guys like to eat. So here's food, uh, the mountain house meal. Put that right in there, lots of space for that. And then water, I like to take my Sea to Summit. This is a four liter pack tap. I'll strap this to the outside, not because there isn't room, but just because that way when it's under pressure in there, if it leaked or something, it's not ruining all of my gear. Um, so I like to just keep it when it's full on the outside just as a safety precaution. 
uh, to save myself the inconvenience of having to sleep in completely wet gear. But in terms of basics, that's it, it's covered. But the thing is, I have a ton of room left in this bag. So if you wanna go above and beyond, if you like to be comfortable when you're motorcycle camping like I do, let me show you everything else you've still got room for. Say you wanna make a fire in the woods and uh, you gotta gather your own wood because you're going dispersed camping or you're gonna buy a bundle and you need to process it. Hatchet, silky saw. Never go camping without these when I need fire. Plenty of room for these in the bag. And the two biggest luxuries that I like to take with me, but they're completely unnecessary. This is the large Tusk compact camp chair. So it's longer than the regular version. And this is a little table that when I'm dispersed camping, I really get a lot of use out of. These will both fit in there too. I'm not even using an extra dry bag right now. And the only other thing you might be wondering about is what about extra clothes, change of clothes. So I'm just gonna stuff my Giant Loop sweatshirt in there uh, to kind of represent an extra set of clothes. This is really bulky, so it's gonna take up as much as a shirt and pants would or some extra underwear or whatever. Easily. That's all in there. Look at how much space I have left. So I have plenty of room to get three wraps on the top of this bag. I've even got room for a couple more incidentals if I stop somewhere and picked up something weird or I'm gonna throw an extra beer in there or something. I have room. This, this bag is cavernous. So now I'm gonna seal it up. It's got Velcro here, so that helps you get your straight lines, you can start doing your wraps, and you want three wraps to make it mostly waterproof. This bag is completely waterproof, but you have to use the dry pods that come with it to, to guarantee 100% waterproof. Otherwise, it's, it's mostly waterproof, but not like guaranteed submergible waterproof the way it is with the dry pods inside. Okay, so we're gonna do three rolls. One, two, three, three full rolls, and then this, there's a buckle here. I'll buckle down here. Buckle down like that. Wonderful. And then I'm going to strap it down to the back here using the beaver tail. And like I said, I've just got it through my giant loop rack. So if you have a rear rack on your bike, this bag will mount right to it. If you have uh, mounting points, like my KLR has little knobs that go underneath, it'll mount right to that. You can go to the subframe if you have to. This giant loop rack is inexpensive and easy to install, so that's an option that I like. I'm gonna put my water bladder actually on top under the beaver tail. So I'm actually just gonna strap this on. You can add extra gear to the top like this. I've got it running through the strap here, so I'm not worried about losing my water bladder. I actually put two through that, I think. Okay, the bag's not going anywhere. I'll show you what it looks like to sit on it with this. So the bag's all the way on, sturdy. See the bike's moving. Uh, and I, you can tighten these down for even more compression to keep stuff from moving around. I have all these elastic keepers on the straps, which I haven't used, but I would reduce all the flapping around by getting rid of all this extra straps, but I'm just trying to show you kind of what it looks like. Same down here. Let me show you what it looks like riding it with all this stuff on. I have plenty of room. Plenty of room to stand up, plenty of room to get on the bike, to get off the bike. Uh, I've got all of my seat if I want to get forward. I'm riding aggressively or ride back on the back of the seat on the wider part on the highway. That's our biggest horseshoe shaped saddlebag. And like I said, you can take a ton of stuff, like a very comfortable motor camping setup in that bag. And if you wanna take even more stuff, this is the Giant Loop Rogue bag. And it literally just straps down under that beaver tail and buys you another 20 liters of waterproof storage. So great combination here. I usually put my chair and table in this just cause they're extra and they fit. And then that gives me a little bit more room to play with in the Great Basin bag. But if you want to go motorcycle camping on a dual sport or enduro motorcycle, Great Basin Bag is a great choice. Uh, and you can see here how much gear I got into it, and I think it'll work great. So I hope that answers some questions that some of you have had about trying to motorcycle camp on a light enduro or a dual sport bike. Don't forget that all of our products are backed by our limited lifetime warranty and all orders over $75 from giantloopmoto.com ship for free. Please consider subscribing to the channel for more gear overviews and future camping packing videos. I'm gonna do one on our Coyote bag next so you can see how all the gear packs into that on a bike like this. And don't forget that YouTube subscribers save 10% with promo code subscriber. If you have questions about gear, gear setups, what gear might work with your bike, how the bags work, how they mount, any of that, you can use the chat now feature on giantloopmoto.com or just give us a call or email us and we'll do our best to answer your question and get you set up with exactly what works for your bike and your needs. Thank you for watching. Go light, go fast, go far with Giant Loop.